This is not a painting, or is it a computer animation of some kind? No, this is an actual photograph taken from orbit by the ESA Mars Express of a Martian dust storm. The Mars Express is probably my favorite Martian orbiter just because it creates such astonishing images. And although this is a small scale dust storm, it's still very, very impressive. And yet there's so little that we know about them. Are they dangerous? I mean, we know that they fluctuate depending on the seasons. This particular simulation shows water ice clouds and gray, and then the polar ice caps, of course. And here in a minute, during the summer, you're going to see a simulation of a massive dust storm that starts from the poles and expands across the entire planet. And this is not something just simulated or theorized. It actually happens. These dust storms cover the entire planet sometimes for months. And yet there's so much we still don't know. But there are things we do know that are downright disturbing. And this kind of pisses me off because while everybody else is talking about radiation, there's a little publicized report from the NASA Engineering and Safety Center that indicates that if you were to see something like this bearing down on you while you were exploring Mars and didn't take cover immediately, it might be the last mistake you ever make. Welcome to another episode of The Angry Astronaut. I am currently recording this in the dead of night, 3.30 or something along those lines, because we had a storm. Came through, knocked out all the power, sent a tornado through the area. I have no idea whether it's done any damage. Hopefully it hasn't. But... It's kind of apropos, actually, because I want to talk about Martian dust storms. But before I do, I want to offer my words of welcome and thank you. Thank you so much to all these new subscribers I have. There are so many of you um, who came over from To The Future and their very kind shout-out that they did. So... Thanks very much. Welcome, and I'm going to do my very best to give you the, the best quality content that I can for a relatively new channel that started in late December. That having been said, dust storms, are they really all that serious? As many of us know, what was depicted in the movie The Martian, where it was ripping apart the camp and forcing the explorers to abandon their expedition early and leave one of their number behind because of how dangerous the storm was, was exaggerated and unscientific. As I explained to my family after the movie in which they mocked me and said they have scientific consultants and of course you know more than they do, blah blah blah, and a couple of days later, my kids rather sheepishly came to me with an article that they found which confirmed everything that I had said. And uh, in any event, now they ask my opinion about Mars instead of criticizing my knowledge of it, which I'm very, very grateful for because I'm far from a, uh, a an expert on the entire subject. But... As far as Martian dust storms are concerned, are they actually that dangerous? Well, in the conventional sense, no, they aren't. But there are other aspects 
that have yet to be fully studied. You see, it's not the wind or the strength of it because Mars' atmosphere is so thin, as most of us know, that even the strongest dust storm wouldn't feel like much against our body, but it's not the wind itself. It's the nature of the dust and what we don't know about it. And in spite of all of the expeditions that we've sent to the Red Planet, we know shockingly little about the nature of Martian dust and all of the dangers that it could represent, especially if it was being whipped into a frenzy, into a planet-wide storm. And a lot of the initial evidence suggests that these storms may be a hell of a lot more dangerous than any of us supposed. Not enough to keep us from colonizing the planet. I want to be very clear about that. But still, something to be respected. Let me explain. So as we watch a Martian dust devil in action, along with a few images of Martian dust storms themselves, I'm going to read some of the more troubling conclusions made by Dust in the Atmosphere of Mars and its Impact on Human Exploration by the NASA Engineering and Safety Center. Quote, the Martian atmosphere is the origin of many possible hazards to both humans and equipment. Major dust storms may adversely affect human explorers' ability to perform extravehicular activities. More recent laboratory and terrestrial desert studies indicate that triboelectric effects can give rise to large electric fields which might prove hazardous to both explorers and equipment. Abrasive properties of dust accumulating on surfaces and penetrating systems could lead to failure of air generation and delivery, carbon dioxide removal, fire detection causing false alarms, and suppression, EVA suits, rovers, windows, visors, and optics. If critical life support systems completely fail, rescue or mission termination is not feasible. The report goes on to say that based on laboratory studies and terrestrial desert tests, there is a growing body of evidence that dust devils and storms may develop dipole-like electric field structures similar in nature to terrestrial thunderstorms. During human occupation of Mars, dust storm discharges and induced electrostatic effects may also force human explorers to seek shelter, re reducing EVA time, habitat maintenance, etc. And even if you took shelter, the danger doesn't end there. Quote, Dust transported into the habitat via leakage or EVA suits may decrease effectiveness of air, water, and food management systems and lead to inhalation and ingestion of dust particles. Electrostatically charged particles adhere to tissue and create bronchial deposits. And the report goes on to compare the consequences of inhaling Martian dust with the consequences of black lung disease. So essentially, Martian dust storms kick up talcum powder-like dust that's both poisonous, electrostatically charged, and very difficult to remove from your suit once you finally do get to shelter. Not a great thing to get stuck in. And there is yet another hazard involved with Martian dust storms, and that's extreme lack of visibility. As you can see from these series of pictures, it literally turns day into night. So even if you were in a vehicle, you would be depending exclusively on instruments. Instruments being affected by electrical discharges and accumulating dust. So let's have a look at a worst case scenario. Let's say you're working in the field looking for valuable minerals or any signs of life when all of a sudden crackling warnings start coming to you over your comms. You turn around and see this bearing down on you. You try to get back to your transport but fail to do so. The dust begins to accumulate on your suit, on your visor, further reducing your visibility, 
and flailing about in the darkness, you trip on a rock, shatter your visor, and that's the end of your adventures on Mars. And even if you get back to your vehicle, you're still not out of the woods. The electrostatic dust will build up on the vehicle on the windscreen, leading to the possibility of a breakdown or an accident and the dangers associated with that. And also, the astronauts will bring toxic dust in with them, quite possibly inhaling it as they try to get back to base, leading to death by lung disease later on in their life on Mars. Not very pleasant. But the danger of dust storms may not be just restricted to people on the ground. What happens if the starship is making its approach to the red planet, and as they come in, instead of seeing this red, inviting planet with surface features they've been expecting, they see the planet on the right instead of the planet on the left. They can stay in orbit for a while, but as supplies run out and they continue to be bombarded by cosmic rays, and the planet-wide dust storm goes on month after month, and even their backup landing sites are cut off to them, what are they going to do? Well, they may decide to risk it and make an entry. And what happens when a very large craft attempts to enter the Martian atmosphere being bombarded by electrostatic dust, thousands of kilometers worth of it. Well, the fact is we just don't know, but chances are it's not going to be a very good idea. As the vessel comes in to land through a cloud of electrostatically charged particles, quite a lot of them given the amount of atmosphere the starship is going to have to pass through, a large amount of dust may accumulate on the vessel in the process. And as it has to execute this very complicated landing procedure, this might happen. Now when this happened to Apollo 12, it caused both temporary and permanent damage to some of the ship's electronics. But if it were to cause any malfunction in the stabilizing fins or in the Starship's attitude control system thrusters, the landing could end up being quite cataclysmic, which is why ships tend not to launch during thunderstorms. But what do we do about all this? This dust, this damn toxic stuff seems to be quite a problem. How do we remedy this issue? Well, a team at Brigham Young University have been studying both small dust storms and gigantic ones, trying to recreate the effects of these storms in a laboratory setting. But unfortunately, we have nothing on Earth that duplicates the exact qualities of Martian regolith. We can try to duplicate them, but a lot of this is only guesswork. We can take dust similar to the regolith and pass electric charges through it, but really the only solution is to send an experiment to the planet. And we don't have a surface experiment planned for years, which is not very convenient. But one probe that will arrive at Mars to meet Elon's 2024 deadline is the HOPE mission sent by the United Arab Emirates. It's specifically designed to study the Martian weather and Martian dust storms, at least giving us an opportunity to predict them and perhaps avoid them. This probe has arrived in Japan where it's to be launched ahead of schedule on April 24th, just on Friday, and I cover it in another video which I have linked in the description. But as this probe helps us to avoid Martian dust storms, I hope I've also made it clear that we need to prioritize learning how to protect ourselves from these phenomena. Because it's not just about blocking out our solar panels as everybody talks about. It's a lot more dangerous than that. Now I want to emphasize, we don't know a lot about the subject really. 
all of the information in this NASA report is supposition and theory based on ideas on simulations that they've done on relatively similar regolith here. But we don't have any dust on Earth that comes anywhere close to being the same as the dust on Mars. And even the regolith on the Moon, as I mentioned before, is different. So the problem really is what we don't know and there's not going to be any significant studies of this before Elon Musk's planned human mission in 2024, assuming that happens. Chances are we're still not going to know a hell of a lot before that mission. Now, if he goes later than 2024, perhaps we'll have a chance to learn some more. But in the meantime, if we do carry out a 2024 human mission, or if our fears are confirmed and these storms are as dangerous as this report might suggest, then we need to treat them with great respect. Because Mars, I suspect, is a planet that still has some very potent dangers left in it. And we need to bear that in mind. Space is hard. We always knew that. But these storms may be harder still. And it's something that we're going to have to remember or ignore at our peril. So, until we're actually confronting these storms on the faraway surface of the red planet, Stay angry about space.